The following is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. In the words of the scientist, nobody said it was easy. No one ever said it would be this hard. The schedule maker must have been humming along to Coldplay's greatest hits album when they came up with this one, because it's a new season and a new weather model. It should mean a whole new level of excitement. The already exciting Summit Point Raceway for round one of the Camel GT Series. And it's coming up next live right here on the iRacing Esports Network, presented by Global Sim Racing Channel. Hi, everybody. I'm Jason Galvin. Great to have you with us on this Saturday morning in the States. And with me today, veteran Camel Series racer Stefan Schlocker. Behind the scenes, our director is Sean Ambrose using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Stefan, it's Summit Point. It is far from a traditional track for these old IMSA-style race cars, especially all that horsepower built into the Nissan. But the drivers seem to love it. What makes this course so much fun? You already said it perfectly, Jason, there, but I can tell you, as you said, this just doesn't seem to fit at all. But amongst the Camel GT community, Summit Point Raceway is probably even the most liked uh, racetrack here. Uh, the only thing that ever changed on this track since its grand opening in 1970 was the addition of the Northern Loop that now makes up turns 6, 7 and 8. A two mile 10 turn highly technical racetrack that requires full concentration all the time, especially in fast, old school race cars like we see before us today. Fast turns have been broken up by slow, bumpy, tight turns, yet everything in perfect flow. Some might even say it's the perfect club circuit, and probably that's why we like it so much. But there's no better way to show you what this track is all about than watching our GSRC Lab Guide. All right, we've got Clayton McLeod in the GSRC Nissan, so let's do a lap around Summit Point. Turn one will easily be your best chance for a pass, but this is a narrow circuit, and if you run into traffic at the wrong time, things could go bad in a hurry. As the track opens up coming out of the corner, be careful with the throttle since the turbo lag can quickly send you swapping ends. Turn three is high commitment, off camber, and blind. That gravel trap on the outside is gonna deposit lots of gunk as cars go wide all day. Four will bleed directly into five, and that makes passing a very hairy proposition. Things go wrong so often here, it's sometimes called yard sale corner unofficially. That takes us to the technical second half of the track, where you're mostly getting little squirts of the gas before having to slow again. Patience and a gentle right foot will pay off through here. As the track weaves back and forth, ideally you want to set yourself up for a wide angle into nine. Get on the power as soon as it's safe and take a short breather. Turn 10 can sometimes give you a look at an overtake, but you've got to get a phenomenal run on the car in front. This medium speed bend rounds out the lap, but as we come to the line, we've now finished the lap around Summit Point. And that was our GSRC lap guide. It is a quick lap around this track here. Uh, the best drivers will be scooting around here in under a minute, which is hard to believe. Let's take a look at the uh, championship standings from last year, as this is the season opener for Camel GT. And in the GTP series with the big Nissans, uh, Fabian Gerber led the way, a 36-point win over Ardo Ehimaki. Uh, Justin Albrecht came home in third with a Timo, uh, Timu Toika and Mike Houghton rounding out the top five. GTP lights, because this series is broken up uh, individually into some of the more advanced drivers and uh, some of the younger drivers in the series. And it was uh, Martin Kreitrick who won the GTP light championships last year over Johnny Bell of the United States by 72 and a half points. Matthias Gouldager, Mike Kopik, and Dave Peterson were the top five for GTP lights. That's the Nissan points. How the Audis stack up, Stefan? Oh, 
Um, well, Jason, uh, GTO standings fill in and around the lake. He won your GTO standings right in front of his teammate and countryman, Jamie Hall. Riley Thompson right behind him. He is really looking forward to running this season and taking that challenge up to fill. Nicholas Mucanos, he was your fourth driver in the championship and Ovo Trangerate in fifth place. In GTU, we saw Milan Anoshi winning the series in front of Andrea Albertinelli, the Italian driver. Hideki Coivisto, he was your third driver. Thomas Delmuth on his debut right into fourth in front of Reed Miller. That was your top five in the standings of GTU. And if I believe right, we are already in qualifying here for Summit Point. That is correct, Stefan. We are uh, in qualifying and there is four minutes, just under four minutes in qualifying. And right now, Dave Walsh at the top of the board and the only car to break that mythical 58 second barrier, mythical no more, 58.952 for Dave Walsh in his uh, number 22 Nissan. Uh, and then uh, Ayamaki is in second right a 59 oh Fabian Gerber who uh, just got done turning some laps in a Formula 1 car 59-11 is third then Justin Albrecht and Rob Oldnicht is uh, in fifth right now and, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong Stefan but uh, Rob I think ran the Audi last year so uh, jumping over into uh, the Nissan could be something fun to watch yeah Olenichak he said he was searching for some new um, challenges and so he went up to the Nissans and if I remember correctly let's see if he is no Jamie Hall he remained in the GTO if I remember right he said he wanted to drive in the GTP but he is right now in the GTO car in second place Yoni Hagner he was also coming back from a bit of an off time in Camel GT he is right now your first place in GTO 55 cars in this race, Stefan. The, the series missed, remember, this is an iRacing official series, and then points are kept individually uh, by uh, the, the league organizers here uh, for the purpose of having multiple divisions in, in each class of cars. But to have 55 cars in an official race with miss splitting by one car, which means we have a full field on this little tiny track, how much does that change how important qualifying is? Well, in, uh, qualifying is extremely important and actually let's bring up the race details right here also right now because as we said we're in season uh, season one of 2019 so week one right here two drop drop weeks in total throughout this 12 week series oh, obviously official iRacing series we're here so if you want to take on these guys in these cars C class is where you are. A race distance today 40 minutes which makes it even more crucial that you have a good qualifying here today because passing it's not easy. Setups are open. You want to run high downforce at this car but you don't have to worry about fuel. You will have enough spare in your tank to make this race. Scoring as you can see first scores 25. It goes down to 20th and that is by the way split up for all four uh, classes so all four classes get scored equally so if you're second in GTU you will score second point uh, it is not per class on board or look, taking a look at Ove uh, Trangarine right now and uh, this race is going to be brought to you today on the iRacing Esports Network if you're looking for more action uh, across the iRacing platform of broadcasters. GSRC, one of many broadcasters to bring you races. Subscribe today to the iRacing Esports Network a YouTube channel, iRacing Esports Network, a fantastic partnership iRacing has with several broadcasters here on the service. It has been nothing but a joy to see the progression of the Esports Network over the last couple of months since iRacing launched it. The one place you need to go for the best racing and iRacing is the eSports Network. And you're going to see a good one here with this Camel GT race today. Uh, as it's just a few cars left to uh, turn their qualifying laps and the session coming to an end. So let's take a look at the grid as we get ready 
for round number one of Camel GT here at Summit Point. And starting on the front row, Dave Walsh, the only car in the 58 second range at a 58.95, will start next to Ardo Iamaki, Fabian Gerber, Justin Albrecht in row two, Rob Olnick and Antti Lepisto in row three, Vili Ruala and Martin Krytrick in row four, and Timu Toika and John Keith in row five. Row six, Clayton McLeod and Carl Kask, then Mick Clearidge and Fabian Jungbluth in row seven. Row eight, Matt Malone and James King, Stefan Warcup and Radic Sikora in row nine. Row ten, Christine O'Reilly and Benjamin Morton. Moving into row number 11 for uh, the Nissans, and it's Bronislav Rovanek and Paul Stevenson, then Bob Poplett and Jason Schmidt, Todd Johnson, and Jao Ribeiro in row 13. And that moves us over to the Audis. In row 14, that's your pole position right there. Joni Hagner, he snatched it away from Jamie Hall. Two tenths between the two. Riley Thompson, your third place driver. Milan Anosi, GTU driver right there. He's your fastest. He is in fourth. Uh, Philip Lake, strange to see him in fifth, but I'm sure he will get up there by the end of the race. Albert, Andrea Albacinelli in sixth, um, Antti Terro, seventh, Mathieu Shed, eighth, Nicolas Mucanos, ninth, Owe Trangere, tenth, Dennis Neidhardt, Churchill, Buscemi, Riley Downey, that's a GTP right in the middle of your GTO field right there. Hopefully he was just very slow on his qualifying lap. Reed Miller, he is your 11th place driver. Tana McCullough, that's already 43rd overall. Sergei Serbin, uh, Hideki Kovisto, Mika Kibukuro, Brian Shanahan, he is a comeback also here in 47th overall. We are we are ready. Sam Rosemont, 48th. Javier Alvarez Lago, 49th. Mike Haynes, he's your 50th driver in this race. Jonathan Boysford, 51st. Alan McCain, 52nd. AJ Henderson, he is the last car to put in a lap. 53rd. Dave Peterson, Ivo Andrenini, uh, Logan Simmons, and Frank Schrupp, they all opted to not put in a lap. Stefan, as we roll on the pace lap, it'll be a quick one here. What are we watching for on lap one? Well, lap one, obviously, everyone will try to get sorted. It's not easy to race side by side here, so we hopefully won't see anything happening into turn one, trouble-wise, that is. Um, we have to keep an eye out for turn five. Uh, we here at GSRC, we call turn five the yard sale, and that's probably where some action will happen. Hopefully nothing will happen in terms of bent uh, cars. We might see something though because it's very easy to get that turn wrong, especially that entry because you have that kink as we go through right now, that right hander kink. And then it's a very tricky, bumpy braking zone into that turn five. And if you get that wrong, you are gonna land in one of those barriers. Yard sale might be my favorite name of any corner that uh, we've ever dubbed here at GSRC. As the cars make their ways through the back half of this track, here's the slow technical section, turns seven and eight into turn nine here as the pace car brings the front row through. It's two Castrol painted cars of Dave Walsh and Ardo Ayamak. Down the last big straight into turn 10. Pit entrance just past the bridge here. The Porsche Pace car will pull off. And the field now in the hands of the pole sitter, Dave Walsh. And he is on the loud pedal, and we are green. Race one of the Campbell GT Series underway here at Summit Point. Motorsports Park in West Virginia and a clean start so far for the Nissans as Walsh hammers it down into turn one ahead of Ardo. So far, everybody through turn one pretty clean. We do have a car off. That is Carl Kent. And here come the Audis. Well, in Audi, we already had a bit of a scramble there at the start, but all good and clean so far. The first six cars, they're already a bit ahead of the rest of the field and they're actually already catching quickly the back end of your GTP field. 
So, yeah, very clean start from your GTO cars, but they are in pursuit of your GTP cars. Dave Walsh has already opened himself up over a second lead. Now in front with the GTP. Yanni Hagner has also gapped Jamie Hall. Hagner wasted no time pulling away in the Audi. As they come snaking down the front straight away. What a beautiful sight that is. Off into turn. Remember, this is a timed race, so 40 minutes means we should turn somewhere north of, what, 45 laps or so by the time it's all said and done. As they snake their way through and head off towards yard sales, we take a look at the GTO class now. And Riley Thompson has moved up into... Riley Thompson, he did take that start very perfectly. He was sitting right behind Tony Hagman. He got that jump perfectly jumped Jamie Hall and got him up into that second place. Milanosi, he is right now your fourth place driver. He is showing uh, or he is building up from a very strong performance at a Sebring 300 kilometer race and he is continuing that high sitting in fourth right now. I'm really curious to see how he will be able to play out this race. Taking a look at Matt Malone in the seventh spot. Not in the seventh spot, double checking on where Matt's at. Matt down in 14th right now in the car number seven. Up one spot. Driver out of Illinois. That classic Nissan paint scheme. When you think of this car, Stefan, that is that is the car I think of right there. Is that? Yeah, it's just such an iconic car, the blue with the red roof. You know that that is a Nissan just looking at the car. You don't even need those logos on that car. You already know that's a Nissan. It has to be that ZX Turbo. But yeah, Matt Mello, he is already showing some great speed here. 14th sitting, putting up one place from his starting position. Um, he is not very often in the series, but when he comes, he is here to stay. And we have a replay here. Big crash. Looks like Paul. Paul Stevenson, who was off. Let's see on the replay. Here's I'm gonna the replay. see it with you. Well, that car is in a world of hurt. Well, here it look. comes. It's out of turn two. Um, he is in that also iconic GDP livery right here. There we come. Here he comes, and there he spins out just that tubal leg, and yeah, the guys behind the, him try to scramble around him, not being fully available to that avoid was him. Riley Downey, who was also collected in that. Downey had been a big mover as we go back up front right. And it's the Dave Walsh show. Dave Walsh making this look easy from the pole position. We did not take any time to catch lap traffic. Look at this. And we got cars bouncing off each other behind. Let's see. Dave Walsh here. He's, as I said, already going through the back end of the GTO field. Having a bit of a trouble here, but we are jumping up to P3 in your GTO class. That's Jamie Hall um, versus... Uh, Right, Thompson, there's a GTP joining the track at a bad angle. Luckily, everyone was able to avoid that. These two are battling, meanwhile, way behind. Oh! Yoni Hagner oh. has checked it. AJ Henderson up ahead. He is already a lap car for the GTO field. He outbreaked him completely. For a second, I thought that was Yoni Hagner with some problems, but... Thankfully, your leader is still your leader. Too much action going on right now. Battle for fourth here. Our Nazi and Philip Lake. In through yard sale. That's not an area that's real conducive to passing. Yeah, here's the problem that you have with the GTO. Yes, you have all that traction, but with a car ahead of you, you can't 
drive your own line here, so you have to patiently wait because the track is not wide enough. But Phil Lake with a great run here. Let's see, does he zoom something into turn 10? Yes, he does. To the inside he goes and has to back off again. Milan Anosi is staying in fifth position. How difficult is it to make a pass on the outside like that? We've got a battle for the lead. Battle for the lead up front now. We'll get back to that in a second. Whoa. Dave Walsh having to defend. Sam Rosamond not quite up there with his F3 box, nearly running Dave Walsh over there. Dave Walsh, he already lost the lead there to r 2 Mackie before that incident. So yeah, the traffic really costing him. Jungbluth in trouble, and boy, the bad day continues for Fabian Jungbluth. We'll take another look here. Jungbluth also ran into issues early on in the Formula One race we just broadcast. And here's Jungbluth. And just turbo lag. Turbo lag is the secret here, is it not? Um, this one is not a turbo lag. It's actually him hitting the inside curb that has a very big bump there. And with this stiff spring setup that these cars have, he got spun out. Up front, Ardo has started to check out on Dave Walsh after making that pass in lap traffic. Ardo's lead up to uh, almost a, he starts to snake his way down the front straight away. And look at this, just ducking in and out of slower cars. Ardo and Walsh both to the inside line down into turn one. We're, we're that seems like a precarious far. spot. We're already quite far up here in our GTO field, so the traffic will only get faster, but you're gonna start to be more and more aware of your positions. Further back here in the GTP field, Billy Ruola, Mick Claridge, somewhere in that mix of 15 cars on screen. What a battle this is. How'd you like to be stuck in this, the traffic jam? This makes the freeways in Los Angeles down where I am look tame. I tell you something, Jason. I really love to race Camel GT, especially with fields like this, but I'm glad that I'm sitting here in my warm booth <laughs> and not have to race. Up ahead of Ruola. Mick Claridge, Martin Kreitrick, heading down to one. Kreitrick will be able to defend for now. Claridge not close enough to duck out. Behind him, Ruola inside of Malone and Keefe. Going back to the front of the GTP class. Yeah, they're right now, right in the mix here of your GTO battle, that is for second position. So they really have to fight through the battle right now because they don't want to lose any position themselves. Justin Albrecht in trouble. And now they're clear of this battle for second place, so... Archie Mackey, he is in perfect pursuit. Oh, sorry, all the way around Walsh. He is right behind Archie Mackey, who is your leader. He is right now behind Joni Hagner. And then there's a little bit of clear space ahead of Joni Hagner, 42 to battle out. Matt Malone also running into problem. Here's another look, the GTP. Once again, again is that a curb issue, suspension. right? Yes, once again, stiff suspicion. He runs way too high on that curb right there. Spins out, locks the brakes, and then lets loose off the brakes and collects Dennis Neidhardt. Stefan, is there anywhere on this track where the curbs are beneficial? Um... Most of the outside curbs are perfectly beneficial as we go on to replay here. Wait. I just heard Malone jump in on the race channel and say I just got loose and apologize. 
yeah, Matt Malone, he's a great guy, obviously, directly apologizing for his mistake. But yeah, um, as, is, as you asked, yes, there are curves that you can perfectly take, but mostly it's the outside curves that you want to take, and you want to stay as far away from the inside curves as possible. Battle for uh, the lead he is really heating up amongst the Audis, and three cars, Yoni Hagner, Riley Thompson, and Jamie Hall have done a nice job of gapping themselves over Philip Lake. Lake, of course, the defending GTO champion. If I have learned something from Sebring, it's don't count Lake out. He is going to come back. And that's what I'm expecting here. Obviously, he got separated from the first three guys by the traffic, but he is going to be there by the end of the race. We also have to say, Joni Agner, he was already out in a quite comfortable lead. Traffic came in, and he got reeled in by Riley Thompson once again. So, we have a battle here back for P1, and it is only going to heat up more and more. Taking a look at the fifth position now in the GTU class. Uh, we're watching right now Martin Kreutrick. That's your fourth place in the GTP category. Um, he is obviously also your leader in the GTP Lights category. Uh, he is being chased down by Chong Kif, who got held up right now by Phil Lake behind. He now has to defend from Timo Toika. Or did Sean Keith actually have a problem? Gonna take a look at Keith here. We're taking a look around his car. Looks okay. I'm scrolling through my cameras here. I don't see any damage on that car. Doesn't mean he didn't have an off, although boy, he's Gonna be careful getting through the field no, 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 here. No. He's now under I, I see what happened. Uh, Anti Lepisto, he had some problems. Um, he is dropping through the field. Um, and oh, big wreck! Toika and Keith. Toika had just gone by Keith and he got loose. And Keith had nowhere to go and jumped over him. That is the biggest wreck of this race so far. Here's another. Boy. Yeah. Did Keith, oh. I think Keith might have just run up under Toyka. All kinds of problems start to unfold now as we get into the mid pack of this race. Here we go. Timo Toyka who really has to slow down. John Keefe not expecting that much of a slowdown and they both run into it. It was Jamie Hall who was in front of them and kind of slowed them up a little. Here's Keefe's car. A lot of damage on that race car now though as he is continuing. to take a look around and see how Timu came out. Oh, we had another incident with Village Roller in turn one that just happened. Sorry, it's actually further up. It's Timo Toika once again with some problems. There we go. That is a bit of a weird one, actually. And again, this is all happening as as the Nissans try to work their way through the leaders in the GTO club. Yeah, Riley Thompson gets slowed down by Justin Albrecht ahead of him. And Clayton McCloud just diving it way too deep in there. No chance of making that pass. Spinning Thompson around and some others are driving into him as we go on board with Riley Thompson there. As oh, Riley. not a wreck! That's now Jamie, Jamie Hall being involved! It was Carl Kask who got into him. Yeah, that that's... Unexperienced GTP drivers right there. Uh, well, boy, Carl this, Karsk. this is one of the more interesting wrecks I've ever seen. Because the Kask is going by Hall with Radix Sakura, and Sakura turns him in a weird spot, and Hall does a good job of getting on the brakes, but then Kask just 
just, it just rolls on, yeah, not just, even holding the brakes. Oh, that is brutal for Jamie Hall. You have to feel for him. Did everything he's supposed to do in that situation. And he looks like he might have got away with this as well, Stefan. He's got some damage on the right front. Car's driving. That might have been cosmetic. He might have got... Yeah, that's a good thing about your Audi 90 Quattro GTO, IMSA GTO car right here. As Juan Ribeiro gets turned around, spins it on the turbo lag out of turn one. But um, with the Audi 90, you can take some beating without it affecting anything of your car. John Keefe has already had an adventurous race trying to break back in the top 10 now behind War Cup. They work their way through yard sale and now into turn six to come out into the acid. Great on board there from Chunky following Stephen War Cup through in Northern Loop. But yeah, John Keefe, he is already battling with his car a little bit because he was involved in some pressures here already, just trying to minimize some damage, trying to overtake Steven World Cup as they go now through the long straight into turn one. Let's see if John Keefe does something right into here, side by side going into turn one. Can he hold the outside line here against Steven World Cup? Still side by side through turn two now, and Great. there he has him. Great racing there as Keith is going to make the move on Warka. Oh, P P2 GTO, they're side by side right now. That's between Phil Lake and Riley Thompson. There's also James King trying to overtake them. They were three wide going into turn one. Phil Lake still trying to attack Riley Thompson here for P2, but Riley Thompson able to take it away from Phil Lake. Clayton McLeod and Vili Ruola battle for seven as they work their way down the front straight. And McLeod just got an excellent run out of turn 10 and kind of opened that up. It was a lot closer as they headed towards the bridge down the back straight. That's Sam Roseman. First McLeod, here comes Ruola. Well, Jason, one thing, we just saw the pass from Riley Thompson on Phil Lake. Well, they're not done. And what they do is they bring in Milan Anoshi. They're the third car in line. He's your GTU driver. He's your highest GTU driver right now. GTU and GTPL, that means drivers below 2.5K I rating. For you guys out there that are not as familiar with the splitting of the series. Keith and Warka combination continues to go at it, and now Radix Sakura is there. That's the battle on your screen right now. They snake their way down the front straightaway. Warka is kind of dropping away position after position right now. He can just not hold on to any position that he has gained so far from his 17th starting grid position. Lap time's really starting to fall off now. But the Nissan's running in the 103 range. That's starting to get into Audi qualifying time range. Slow down much more. Riley Thompson, Phil Lake, battle for second. Phil Lake is still trying to take back that second position from Riley Thompson. He looked into turn one, but he just did get enough draft from the GTP up ahead. That was RTE and Mackie going past the real GTP leader. But yeah, Phil Lake, he's looking for that second place. He wants it. And if Phil wants something, he's going to take it. Lon Arnesey is right there as well, ready to pounce. That's four positions, so there's three cars for position in this battle. Three, 
infantry work their way down onto the front straight away. Austin looks like he'll hold on for now. Well, I can tell you something. There's not a battle that is super close. And that is for P7 in the GTP class. That's Clayton McLeod, Villa Roller. It's Stefan Warcamp and John Keefe all within a second or so uh, between each other as... Oh, John Keefe gets it! Walk up! And hard into the wall for John Keefe. He is pinned to that tire wall. He has to tow that car. Or he's actually able to get it out. There he goes again, but Cole has to go into pit. And that started with Keith just being a little too greedy, trying to get under War Cup. They were both stuck behind Gregorio Buscemi. Battle for the sixth spot in GTO. Nicholas McConos, Tanner McCullough. McConos in the 20 car there. McCullough behind him in that blue 13. Tanner McCullough and right behind him, you just saw him a, an hour or so ago, Ovid Trangarit. He is also your Lotus 49 driver there, winner of the last season of the Lotus 49 championship. He is looking to get that position from Tanner McCullough. That's a shot. Ribeiro, he took to the grass there to avoid the GTO. Sitting at the outside of turn one as there's once again a car to the outside. And there's someone spinning after turn three. Everything is kicking off. Fabian Jungwolf, he is crashed and has to tow. Dave Walsh just had issues as well. Walsh is off with some damage. Over Trangerit, he is also in troubles here at yard sale. Everything is kicking off once again. Which this now means that who's that third for TTP? Is that Kratrick now? Yes, the young it Bluth. is Kratrick. I found the young Bluth incident that, that you referred to, and that's how Dave Walsh got his damage as well, and that's also how Ribeiro ended up there. Anti Taro went off in the Audi down the front straight, spun across the track into Young Bluth and Ribeiro, and Dave Walsh had nowhere to go. So from P3, Dave Walsh's car is heavily damaged, and he's in pit road. Oh, also, some uh, development in GTO. Uh, I totally missed it. Phil Lake, he overtook Riley Thompson for P2. I don't know how long ago that was, sorry. But yeah, I feel like he is now your second position driver in the GTO field. He's still right there. It's Todd Johnson comes around them in the GTP. Arnesy is still in the area as well, behind these two. And you see him go off a little. Battle for third, Kratrick and Toika. Coming down the front straight. Past the pit. Fat team were trying to take away that podium position from Martin Kratrick, your GTP lights driver here, as they got very close Ooh. and Kratrick gets tipped. And move Justin Albrecht into fourth now as he goes past Timo Teuke. Or is he Timo Teuke holding the inside here through turn three and he stays in fourth position. Big move from Toika. Dave Walsh has retired from this race, so the pole sitter and early leader is out. So we continue to look here at Toika trying to Meanwhile, catch back up Riley to Kratrick. Thompson. Riley Thompson, he overtook Phil Lake once again for... Uh, let's actually show you that on the replay, that perfect pass from Riley Thompson there on Phil Lake. Here we go into turn one, it will happen. As just better on the brakes, he goes inside line, accelerates out of the turn, and, and 
while we're on the replay, Phil Lake, Lake once again, we're now into turn two. Oh, Lake sideways, they bounced off each other. Lake got a little loose off of one and bounced into Thompson. This is a great battle here. And Arnesey is still just sitting behind them, waiting for either Thompson or Lake to make a mistake. And here comes now also the podium battle for your GTP drivers. That's Krejcik, Toyka, and Justin Albrecht. So we now have two battles for your podium positions right behind each other. This is where patience will really pay off. Oh! Hold on to it, Milan. Yes, he does. Quattro helps him, and he stays on the track. Not much for patience. And Krejcik now with a big run down the front straightaways. Arnesey recovers, tries to get back up to the And Krejcik That's under attack close. from Koika. Down into turn one, and Riley Thompson there as well does a nice job. Koika has to slot back in. 13 minutes left in this race. Yeah, so much action in this race, it already feels like we're sitting here for three hours. It's like a marathon. No, just half an hour. Right Timo trick Troika. gets another bump. Timo Troika really not his race day so far in terms of trying to overtake Martin Krejcik. Once again, a little bump between the two. As you, can, as you can see, two GTP cars are try, trying to slice their way through this GTO battle here for P2 as Riley Thompson, he misses a shift, I think, out of the last turn. Take another look at Riley Thompson here as he came out of the final what happened it's letting some of the GTP cars go missed a shift indeed uh, right out of the turn 10 on the exit curb he missed that shift probably into I think that's a third gear corner anyway so into fourth he went there miss shifted and move feel like into your P2 again Back to Krejcik and Toika, which has been the best battle on the track for about 10 minutes now. And they are still going at it under the bridge. Toika still trying to get around Krejcik. They run up on Dave Peterson and Sam Roseman. Yeah, and this battle, although it be for P3 in your GTP class, that's already 34 seconds behind Arto Iamaki in first. Justin Albrecht is that third car in line as well, the blue and orange Nissan back there. That is also for position. He's done a nice job of keeping up with these two. Traffic can do wonders for you, trying to defend or trying to attack a position as they once again run up to some TTO traffic. That's Mika Kivopuro in your white and blue livery there. Probably he is finished looking from that car livery. Trick gets to the inside of him and brings Toiku with him. Albrecht will come by now down the final screen. One more Audi to make a move on. Krytrick started to dance around. And Toiku is going to get a good run here. Passing opportunity, Stefan. Yes, two wedges racing against each other. Draft not very effective. Timo Toiku with his damage. He is quite slow on the straight line. Has to go three wide here into turn one. And Timo Toika takes away your third place position here from Martin Kreutzer. Yeah, Toiku just forced the spot there and able to get by Kreutzer. And it feels like Toiku has been quicker than Kreutzer. He just hasn't found a way around him. Let's see if that proves to be the case here already. Look at Toiku just start to open up that gap. Tanner McCullough under attack or trying to attack Nicholas Mukanos. McCullough in that blue car that pops to the Breaks outside. Breaks later. Breaks later here on the outside. Nearly outbreaking himself. That leaves the gap. 
for Nicholas Mukanis to come back. Will he be able to do that? He will have the outside for turn three. And Tanner gives back the position. Interesting. It's a battle for fifth place, sixth place. P3 in the Nissans. As we join them, as they touch, and Timo Troika spins not around. Martin Krejcik in the grass, everyone tries to tiptoe their cars out of the turbo lag. And Timo Troika, third, just an break. he is now fourth in between that John Keefe, and then we have Martin Krejcik moves in into three. John Keefe has had plenty of speed, but is a lap down. Doesn't seem to uh, mind. Oh, oh look out! Oh! And out he got off, and Everyone. that is really one. John Keith Nissan. on his side. He's not gonna get off that side again. That's Albrecht trying to come back on. He's gonna have to probably slow down for cutting across. Comes right back in front of an Audi. Toygu, Krytrick also had some heavy damage from that. Now it's gonna be a matter of who got away cleaning. There's Toyka. Justin Albrecht. Somebody just blew an Audi just blew up in front of them. That was Buscemi, Gregorio yeah, Buscemi. Buscemi. <laughs> Once again, we have a little bit of action here. At a little once. bit. <laughs> <laughs> we can't give up with the action with seven and a half minutes left. Timo Troika, a bit, little bit of turbo lag there. As he is now in fourth, having damage. Martin Krejcik, he is back into third. He survives that somehow. Um, Krytrick's got some damage too, but it's not not nearly as bad. Toyka took the brunt of that because he was the first car in line, and somehow Albrecht, who was underneath John Keefe, I mean Albrecht could tell you the gear ratios Keefe is running. He was so far up under him, has managed to reel Toyka back. Meanwhile, Clayton McLeod, who is damaged and has just been cruising along, is kind of back in the picture here as well. Albrecht goes around. Oh! Justin Albrecht into the rear of Dennis Neidhart there. That was very close for Dennis Neidhart as he's pinching the Timo Troika. Timo Troika, oh, direct! And oh, McLeod very hard into the wall. Troika's not going to recover from that one. He might be able to keep going, but that car is officially what we would call. This Timo view is going to hurt a lot. Yeah, Timo Troika, I think he kind of got scared there by Clayton McLeod flying up to him. Forgot that he had Dennis Neidhardt on his left side and into the barrier he goes. Live again. To Troika's off and in the wall and that's it. Timo Troika calls it a day. Tanner McCullough and Nicholas Mukanas are side by side right now into turn one. They both break very hard, still side by side into turn one to go. Tanner McCullough in on the inside here. Still turn two now, still side by side. Who will have the balls to go side by side in turn three? Both have the balls. Who will stay in front? It's Nicholas Mukanas defending the position from Tanner McCullough. Carl Cask is the. GTP that is uh, in the middle of this and gets through. Bronislav Robinek is also coming. A couple of GTPs come in, including second place Fabian Gerber. And John Keefe, who was upside down the last time we saw him. They will all catch McCullough here. Philip Lake. Riley Thompson and Milan Arnett. I cannot believe that these three are still this close together. We've seen all of them involved in skirmishes at various points with GTP cars, Stefan, and yet the three of them are still right there in a battle for second, third, and fourth in the GTO class. Incredible race. That's the joy of the Audi. You can make up incredible time losses in just a few laps because of how the uh, multi-class works out with the Nissan here. Uh, so yeah, whatever you do, you can always reel someone in just because of traffic. Yeah. 
you know what, Jason, one thing I just realized, we had so much action and so many cars to go through after qualifying that we never had a chance to even think about the weather here. Just a quick update, it's quite cold, 32 degrees Celsius on the track. Um, <laughs> but that just shows you how much action we had here to do it. There you can see it in Fahrenheit, air temperature 80 degree, track temperature 90 degree. We have east by 8 miles per hour from the east, but just plays no role in this race here. Big mess, that's turn one it looks like. Yeah, Bronislav Robinek, he got spun around by one of the Audi Italia guys who were trying to overtake each other. And a bit of a mess, but all played out once again. McConnell and McCullough are still going at it. McConnell and McCullough, and boy, Kreitrick just for some reason bullying his way through. And although he's got Clayton McLeod behind him, so I guess that makes sense. And Albrecht's right in front. It's Benjamin Morton who's really holding them up. Morton in 10th, a lap down in the prototype. Yeah, Ivo Andronini, out of two slow turns, he both times missed the upshift, holding everyone up behind him. And yeah, as this traffic jam clears out again, the GDPs blast past the GTOs. Money great trick, he is in. Fourth place, actually, just an outbreak. He overtook Marty Kreitrick for third place. Billy Rolla had a chance to get around Tanner McCullough there and did not take advantage of it. That's going to let Clayton McLeod start to pull back away in fifth. He's got a lot of ground to make up now to crank. Here's McLeod. McLeod just won. Our last broadcast here on GSRC the iRacing Esports Network, and a Formula One car in his home country of Canada. This is a starkly different car to drive. Just jump over with 20 minutes worth of time. By the way, one thing I realized is we're just two laps away from the checkered flag already. And Arthur Iamaki, he's right now going through turn a nine. Uh, that is your TTP leader. I feel bad for Ardo because we haven't talked about him since he took the lead from Dave Walsh because Walsh had problems right after it. So Ardo has just been cruising. He's probably not going to be too upset that we haven't talked about him. Two laps left in this one. Yeah, just look at that lead over the second place car, Fabian Gerber. 39 and a half seconds. That's over half a lap in front of your second place driver. Clinical has been this run from Arno Yamaki. Yoni Hogner has also had himself a comfortable lead for the majority of this race, up to seven seconds or so on Philip Lay. Yeah, not as, not as uh, big of a gap to second place as your GTP leader, but still as dominant Yoni Hagner only once in a bit of a chuzzle there for first position, but I was because of traffic. Otherwise, unchallenged. Yamaki again should see the white flag as he comes down the front straight away this time. We'll see if he does. Yes, he will be as there are just eight seconds or so left on the clock as he crosses the start finish time for the second last time. Hogner getting a little bit of a jam on his final lap. Yeah, Coming Radek Sikora was rejoining the track there. Here's Iamaki working his way through. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine. On to the back straight one final time. Down the hill, under the bridge, into turn. Round one. 
of the Camel GT Series goes to the fin. It's Ardo Iamaki taking the win in Camel GT. Dominant performance by the Finn with speed, but Joni Hagner not much slower than his countrymen, his fellow countrymen. Both are Finnish here. So it's a finish 1 1 here at the finish line. As Joni Hagner one last time underneath the bridge into the last turn. That's turn 10. He goes trying to put on a drift here for the people on the outside here of the racetrack. Over the finish line he goes to take the first win of the season. A finish sweep in Camel GT. As the rest of the field comes across. Here's Tanner McCullough. And Nicholas McConos. Down the back straight one final time. Under the bridge. McCullough is going to hang on it looks like. Tanner McCullough holds off Meccano. A lot of good battles on that last lap. Billy Ruola got around Clayton McLeod to take fifth overall. McLeod went off and turned five on the lap. And the sound of silence. Hello darkness, my old friend, settles in over West Virginia. That does it. We'll take a break, come back, and try to talk to some of the winners here. It's Camel GT and Ardo Iamaki takes the overall win. Welcome back to the rolling hills of West Virginia. Somewhere John Denver's probably thinking to himself, man, I had a front row seat to that race and couldn't even keep up with it. Arno Iamaki wins Camel GT round number one here to kick off this season. 
in a spectacular race. Let's take a look at the final results. It's Iamaki who just checked out on the whole field over Fabian Gerber. But then we had that great battle. Gerber, Justin Albrecht almost got there for second at the end. Martin Kreitrick ends up in fourth. Billy Riola got around Clayton McLeod in the last lap for fifth. Stephen Warcup in seventh. James King, the first car lap down in eighth. Radic Sakura in ninth. And Benjamin Morton comes home in tenth overall. Todd Johnson brings up the next run of cars here. He is in 11th and the final car of the uh, GTPs that were able to stay ahead of the GTO class was Todd Johnson. Yanni Hagner picks up the win in GTO. Philip Lake, Riley Thompson, Milan Arnesi, and Antti Tero. And then Bronislav Robinek, Tanner McCullough, Nicholas Makanos, and Jamie Hall. Stefan, Yes, as you've realized, we're already in the thick of your GTO people here. Um, Hideki Kovisto, he's your 21st overall finisher. Dennis Neidhardt, Mathieu Schett, that's already your 23rd. John Keefe, he didn't finish your race here. He was laying on his side, if you remember, just a few moments ago. That's in 24th. Sergei Serbin, 25th. Brian Shanahan, 26th. Dave Peterson, 27th. Sam Roseman, 28th. That's already four laps behind your overall winner here, Mika Kivipuro in 29th, um, Ellen McCain 30th, Michael Haynes 31st, Ivo Andre Ni in 32nd, Timo Troika, I think that's your first car who didn't finish this race yet, 8 laps down and then we have a boatload of people who didn't finish, Jonathan Boisvert 34th, Carl Kask in 35th, Antti Leibis to 10 laps behind 36th, Mick Kledge 37th, uh, Javier Alvarez Lago 38th, Joao Ribeiro in 39th, Ove Trangorate in 40th, and for the last 15 people, I'm going to shoot it over to you again, Jason, because this is a long list. <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave Walsh, poor Dave Walsh uh, was the pole sitter and led early and goes out, and Paul Stevenson, Logan Simmons, Gregorio Buscemi had a rough day, Frank Schroeder, Rob Olchik uh, went out early, Fabian Youngbluth also went out early, Andrea Albertinelli, Christina... Bob Poplett gets us to 50th. Guess what? There's more. There is more indeed. Matt Malone, 51st. H.A. Henderson, 52nd. Riley Downey, 30, uh, 53rd. Jason Smith, 54th. And your last car that took the green flag, Reed Miller, 55th. 36 laps behind your finishing GTP car. And let's get to some of the interviews here. And second place overall, second place in the GTP class, Fabian Gerber. Hello. With a solid run. Fabian, welcome and great run here to start the season. Boy, you had a mirror full of those GTPs at the end and you were able to hold on for second place. How was your race? Yeah, it was uh, quite fun at the beginning. Really great. It was uh, a lot of action on the track. And, uh, but, once uh, Dave Walsh spun in front of me, I didn't see him because I was behind another driver and I just hit him and I had heavy damage afterwards, so I uh, had less top speed than the Audis actually. It was from then on not so much fun to drive, but uh, I ma somehow managed to stay in second. I was also lucky, I guess. How difficult was it to work your way through all the traffic in this race? It seemed like every time we switched to a car, there was something happening. Yes, there was traffic all the time, very early on in the race, and I don't think I had ever a lap after that without traffic. Most of the time it was totally okay, it's just uh, some Audis don't stay on the racing line, then it gets difficult, but otherwise everything was fine. Well, Fabian, congratulations on a, a great run for you. Are you looking forward to Silverstone? Sure, that's a great track. I love Silverstone and I'm really looking forward to it. I don't know which version we drive yet. I have to look into that, but I guess anyone is fun. Running the GP course next. So Fabian Gerber comes home in second place overall here in the GTP. Stefan, who you got? Well, I am here with Yoni Hagner, your first place finisher in the GTO category. The Finn taking it to the finish on a... Without the traffic, it would have been quite an easy Saturday evening drive, but boy, was the traffic a bit 
of uh, Scramble here. Yoni, how did it feel to you going through that traffic today? Well, at the start, I uh, tried to get a little cap. And uh, I know that the traffic was uh, quite uh, bad this time, but uh, then I got a little cap and uh, tried to take a safe, uh, safe, safely with the traffic and yeah, give my one uh, car in one piece. <laughs> uh, and you perfectly executed that. Just to give you a bit of a number, you started in thirtieth overall, finished in twelfth. Overall, so you gain quite a lot of positions there alone from GDPs. But moving on from Summit Point to Silverstone GP, quite a different pace, the two tracks. Uh, how do you feel going over into Silverstone? Well, uh, uh, Summit Point is one of the best outer tracks in the cal calendar, and uh, Silverstone is not so good for Audi because, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's much more Nissan track. Yeah, Silverstone, as Yoni said, he is. It, Silverstone is quite on the opposite end of the spectrum. But yeah, Yoni, before we let you go, anyone you want to thank who made this win possible for you? Well, uh, I want to say sorry about one Audi that, that uh, is spun in the race. And uh, hi to mom. <laughs> hi to <laughs> mom, yes. And that tells you how humbly the camel gt series is he is openly uh, uh saying sorry here on the broadcast but jason over to you and i think you are with our gto uh second place finisher second place finisher and defending series champion phil lake uh from the uk to the united states today phil in a second place run uh but that battle between you and riley thompson and milan was the closest battle in this race from the drop of the green to the finish how much fun uh yeah that was it was a lot of fun battling with riley again and um yeah it was kind of kind of a strange race because the the battling was so close and so clean and then every so often there was just crazy traffic and then it would go back to the battle and it was kind of uh really intense it felt a lot longer than 40 minutes <laughs> it felt longer for 40 minutes for us, too. We were making that comment there with about five minutes left in the race. It felt like we'd uh, been broadcasting a, a three-hour endurance race around Summit Point. I, I want to ask you about the start because we were watching the GTPs go through uh, turns three and four. And by the time we got back to, to the GTO class, it seemed like Yoni just checked out on the start of the race. Well, what was the difference with him getting that big gap early? Uh, yeah, Yoni... He only went um, just as we got to the bridge before the last turn, and um, I was kind of anticipating the green, but not quite ready for it, and I don't think anybody else was either, and he got a really good jump on us, but um, he's super fast in this car, so the only way I was going to be able to fight with him today was maybe if I'd qualified better, but yeah, congrats well, to him. You come home in second. It was a fun race to watch. You're the defending series champion, and now we go back. Uh, to the UK and Silverstone for next week's race. Uh, how confident are you heading into that event? Uh, I love all the British tracks, and uh, so I'm hoping for a good result. Um, I usually go pretty well at Silverstone, so yeah, reasonably confident heading into that one. All right, that's Phil Lake comes home in second place in the GTO class here uh, at Summit Point. Well, to close out the interviews here, I'm with Riley Thompson, who was your third place finisher of the GTO class. Riley, uh, quite an eventful race there for you, battling out with Phil Lake and Milan Noshi all the time and also having a little bit of a scrub with the Nissan. Talk us through your race with, let's say, three words. Just freaking crazy, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, you, you described it quite perfectly right in there. But to get a bit deeper into uh, how did it feel battling out once again with your main rival for the season? Honestly, it's awesome as usual. It's always respectful. We're always able to give each other as little room as possible and still do anything with it. And like every time I'm by him, I know it's going to be a good battle. And a good battle indeed it was.
Well, as we already talked with Ioni, he said, obviously, Silverstone being quite a bad track for the Audi, Summit Point being quite a good track for the Audi. How do you feel moving forward to um, Silverstone? Honestly, I feel pretty good. I think it was my first win in Camel, although it wasn't the broadcast race, but it's still my first win in Camel when we went to Silverstone last time. So definitely looking forward to it. Well, everyone, that was Riley Thompson right there, your third place finisher. And Jason, as we have heard already, quite some mixed feeling going forward into Silverstone. Yeah, an interesting race uh, all across here for round one of the Camel GT Championship uh, this season here on the iRacing Esports Network. And looking forward to see how the rest of the year shakes out uh, in the Camel GT series. Uh, remember, subscribe to the iRacing Esports Network on YouTube if you want to keep up to date with all the latest and greatest iRacing action from across the board. And uh, go check us out at the Global Sim Racing channel as well. Big thank you to all the companies that help us here at GSRC to be able to put these broadcasts uh, on the air you'll see some of them come across your screen now and uh, also thanks to uh, eric Eckholm and zoom malone with uh, the music that they provide for us here today the website to get a hold of more of their great work big thanks to the team that helps put this camel gt series on stefan sean dougie beard if you'd like to find out more about gsrc including our upcoming races check us out global sim racing channel.com follow us on social media as well twitter facebook Instagram, we're on all of them. Don't forget to subscribe to the GSRC YouTube page as well. It's that big red button. It says subscribe. You can't miss it. I promise. Next race for the Camel GT Series is at Silverstone, the GP circuit. Once again, be right here on the iRacing Sports Network next Saturday at noon Eastern. Up next uh, for GSRC, the Bootleg Outlaw Modified Series. Just saw that come across the screen there. New Smyrna Championship Race. That is coming your way tonight. We'll have an upcoming uh, races for the other series listed here across the screen. Make sure you write them down on your calendar. I want to say thank you again to everybody who made this race possible today. It was a great one. It's been a pleasure. Until next time, race clean, race hard. We'll see you on the track.